Next speaker is David Harper. David uh, comes to us from the UK. He's a public health consultant and a leading expert in the field of Legionella, uh, waterborne contamination prevention and emergency response. David provides the engineering expertise to medical teams uh, uh, which investigates via epidemiology methods. When the problem is identified, it's David's job to engineer the problem out. He's a qualified electrician and, a qu and qualified in healthcare engineering and estate management, a fellow of the Water Management Society, a member of the Chartered Institute of Plumbing and Heating Engineering, a member of the Institute of Engineering and Technology, and an honorary fellow of the Society of Public Health Engineers. Please welcome David Harper to speak on Legionella and other waterborne diseases, how to engineer the problems out, plus a case for controlling the temperature in drinking water. Welcome, David. Thank you very much, sir. I've got to be a bit careful here. Sorry about this. Could you, um, would you mind? I know it's a good start, isn't it, eh? I do apologise, but... Um, don't apologise. Don't have cancer. It's got my hips and I can hardly walk, but never mind. Uh, good afternoon and, and thank you very much, everybody, for inviting me here. Um, I'm very sort of humbled and uh, I must admit I'm very honoured and very, very pleasured. And I really am, it's, it's a great, a great honour to be here. Right, just to start off then, I'm, I'm going to be completely and utterly different. I really am. Um, I, would, I did that this morning at a, at a session this morning. And I want you to put your hands up, ladies and gentlemen. Who have actually been to the hairdressers lately, or the barbers, and had the hair cut? Put your hands up, please. Oh, quite a few of you. I don't have to bother now. And um, the point being is, um, and you've all survived. Yes. You've all survived, haven't you? And I've got to talk about the UK. <laughs> I don't know the figures for down here, down under. And, um, but we've had a number of people who have actually died from Legionnaire's disease who have actually been to the hairdressers. And they've died of Legionnaire's disease. How on earth do you think that is? Anybody know? Come on. This gentleman down here. By the spray in the water when they use it to do your hair. That's one. Great. Magic. 11 out of 10. What was actually happening, there's the bottle of water. Who goes for the... And they spray the hair, don't they? Before they cut it, don't they? Yeah? yeah. Well, that water's been in that bottle for how long? Right? Is it tap fed, tank fed, means water? It's a clear bottle, no doubt. Stood on the windowsill, the sun shone in, and I've seen many of them with green, al with green algae inside them. And that's where the Legionella came from. And the other ones that died from the hairdressers. How many of you in this room have been to the hairdressers and you've had your hair washed there? Hands up. Yeah? <laughs> oh, you survived, you lucky lot, you really are. It's when you're lying back there looking at the stars and all the rest of it, uh, what is actually happening is it's the water in the hose underneath. It gets stagnant and it's a flexible hose and there's rubber in there. And if it's, not type, and if it's the wrong type of rubber in there, the bugs will feed on it. It's their nutrients, it's their food. It's like my, you know, uh, um, you know, ribs, my rare ribs at night when you go for a meal. Yeah, they absolutely love rubber and they feed in there. When you, how many of you are in hotels? I am. Come on, hands up. How many of you went into the hotel whenever you went into there? And I went on, on uh, the other day. And how many of you just got in, chucked your case down, think I'm going to have a shower? Hands up. Is that what you did? Who was in that room the last time? The day before? A month ago. The amount of people who contract Legionnaire's disease from hotels is unbelievable worldwide, I'm talking about. I've had Legionnaire's disease. I landed up in the intensive care. And um, I died three times, and they defib defibbed me back, and my wife said, why did they bother in the first place? But... Uh, <laughs> I love you dearly, you sod. Um, but anyway, that's another story. Um, I've had it. I can't get it again. Okay. 
But even when I go into a hotel room, the first thing I do is go in, turn the taps on on the wash hand basin, put the shower, take the shower off if you can, put it down there, or you know, just turn it on very gently and just leg it, as they say, out of the shower room, yeah, and flush the toilet and go and have a beer. That's the favourite, yes? Because it's stagnant water, and stagnant water and Legionella go together like there is no tomorrow, I can assure you. Uh, what is it, the green button you press? Right. OK, then, so I just thought I'd just ask you those three questions. Anybody a good gardener? Anybody like gardening? Hands up, come on, come on, don't be scared. Right? Um, any, anybody who got a compost heap at the bottom of the garden? Oh, my God, here we go again. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know if you've ever seen compost heaps. It, of course, it depends on the weather outside, of course, but um, lots of times you see them mist off, don't you? Yes? And it's that misting off, and you inhale that. If you put a, te if you put a thermometer in the middle of that uh, compost heap, you'll find it's about 30, 40 degrees centigrade, the ideal temperature for the growth of Legionella. And while you're down doing, get, getting your potty mixture for whatever you're going to do with it, yes, and you inhale that, that's how those people died in that gardening centre, by inhaling that mist coming off. So it's not just thing, it's all sorts of various things. Um, another bug that's floating around, um, I presume you're all married or partners, so I'm not going to get into all that lark, lark of it, but um, you've all had kids somewhere along the line, how many of you have had uh, the, uh, the plastic ducks floating around in the bath? The kids, you know? Come on, hands up. That light's a bit bright. <laughs> OK, a lot of you. Right, we had twins um, the other week, uh, sorry, the other month. And what had actually happened is um, one of the twins unfortunately died and they contracted Legionnaire's disease. And when I cut the plastic duck open, you want to see the muck inside it. Does anybody ever clean their um, and, and disinfect their floating ducks for their kids? I take the silence as no. But it's simple things like that, that where Legionella comes from. So I've just given you a flavour. And the chairman's looking at me, so I better get on with it. Um, OK, then. Um, I'm an engineer, proud of it. Uh, and uh, that's, the way, that's the way it goes. And I'm the guy, as the chairman said, um, who is the engineering bit. So when there's an outbreak of Legionnaires' disease anywhere, um, I'm the, they find out where it is, and I go and sort out and stop it, basically. Go all over the world doing it. Been down in coal mines. I've been out on submarines. Oh, my God, submarines. Never again. And um, uh, oil rigs, gas rigs. I like the cruise line a bit. That's rather nice, that is. I'd rather go for that. But um, the problems with cruise lines, that's a different ball game again, completely. So, yes, I've been around there, and I'm the engineering bit. So let's, let's get going. I was an electrician originally, that's so how I started off. Um, I always wanted to be a police officer, and my dad said, no, get a trade, because if you ever get in trouble, you can always go back being an electrician and earn some money. I always wanted to be a police officer. When I finished my apprenticeship on the Friday, on the, Friday, on the Monday morning, I joined the Liverpool City Police Force. And I'll end up driving the other cars around, the Z cars, if anybody knows that uh, series. Um, and my two claims to fame on two separate occasions there, in the back of my police car, I had the Beatles, the group, the Fab Four. And if I'd have got their signatures there, I'd have been a millionaire. I could have bought this bloody place, no problem. But there you go. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't work like that, does it? I then got beat up a few times, landed up in hospital, they, um, and then I landed up being an electrician again, and then got a, a, a job as um, station engineer, electrical, looking after all the electric bits at Heathrow Airport, and that's a bit of a job and a half, I can assure you. Anyway, next to that was a hospital called Ashford Hospital. They wanted chief engineer, more money. I moved into there, got the job, and I eventually um, landed up at Kingston District General Hospital. And uh, from there, I then, you'll see how it all happens in a moment. Um, I then got um, uh, succumbed to the government public health, public health England, and then, my God, did it happen to me. And it all go went on from there. That's Kingston Hospital. That's where it all sort of kicked off from. And that's where it, um, it all happened. Wednesday, the 11th of July, 1979, I went to work, usual stuff you do, put the two-way radio on and everything else, and went in there, and I got a big call to go and see my boss. 
went into his office and I got introduced to all these doctors and professors and what have you. And um, the, my, my boss, Tom Elwood, he said, we've had three people die in the hospital, David. Well, me being a scouser, and you, and you see people dying, well, people do die, they do, yeah, and all that sort of stuff. And so, um, but he said, um, he looked at me straight in the face and he said to me, by the way, they've died of something called Legionnaire's disease, David. And I remember looking at him straight in the eyes, like, what the hell is that, Tom? And he said, until these people come and explain to me, neither did I. And that is the, the wow factor. That it, from then on, my God, ladies and gentlemen, it's just gone bananas ever since. Uh, when we first there at Kingston Hospital in 1979, the medical profession knew very, very little about Legionnaire's disease. Now it's a different ball game completely. Laboratory, rats, mice and guinea pigs, that's how it all happened. Uh, but nowadays, of course, it's PCR, it's all sorts of things, and it's absolutely different ball game completely. In the engineering world, we knew absolutely nothing about it, completely nothing. And... Um, uh, th th and I had to learn very, very hard, very, 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 very quickly. They found that it was the cooling tower on the roof of the, uh, sorry, on the, in the, uh, in the eight-storey surgical wing. Um, that's where it was. In those early days of cooling towers, the water treatment wasn't very good indeed. It was a cup of this and a cup of that, and, you know, cross your fingers and hope for the best type of idea. Uh, but I then was asked to get it more sort of professional, to which I did proportional dosing pumps, redox and all the rest of it. Um, we got rid of the cooling tower eventually and put air coolers on the top, but the public health was still there taking water samples and blood samples from all the patients. And they then found another um, th four people, in fact, at the Christmas of 1979, who had actually uh, contracted the Legionnaire's disease, and unfortunately, four of the, uh, three of those died, unfortunately, sorry. No cooling tower, where did it come from? Everybody up till then thought it was all to do with cooling towers. Wrong, big time wrong, big time wrong, I can assure you. Anyway, they're found in the domestic hot water system in the main surgical block. And in those early days of 1979, some of you are young enough to remember this, um, we used to run the hot water systems, not only in hospital hotels and all sorts of other places, at about 40, 45 degrees centigrade to stop scalding people. We did not know that that was the, that was the, uh, uh, the area that Legionnaire loves. Abs we didn't know. Nobody knew. We were the first to find out. So Legionella... And below 20 degrees, and these are now gold standards um, around the world, um, at 20 degrees centigrade and below, Legionella lies dormant. It's alive, but it's, a, it, it's dormant. You can freeze it in an ice cube and it can still survive. You can freeze it to absolute freeze, bad English, um, and it will still survive. Melt it and all that sort of stuff and it will come back again. It really is a hardy little bug. At the other end of the scale, at 60 degrees centigrade, um, after two minutes, 99.999% of the bugs are dead. OK, the, the optimum temperature it really likes is 37 degrees centigrade, which, of course, is body temperature. It absolutely loves it. So that is the temperature range that you've got to think of. End of story. You can write as many, many uh, protocols and, 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 and federation this and legion all of that, but the bugs will do that. 20... 60. End of story. You can do what you like, but that's the way they work. Um, and you can't alter it. There's another temperature that came out of Kingston Hospital, and that was a pasteurisation temperature, and that was at 70 degrees centigrade. 70 degrees centigrade, um, after five seconds, they're all dead. Full stop. End of story. Um, and I won't go into that, but there's a bit more to it, but that, those are the figures that I'm trying to get over to you. Legionella itself, lots of people think it's a virus. If it's a virus and you say that in front of me, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one, you know? It's not. It's a bacterium. It's a bacteria. Bacterium, sorry. And, um, and it's found in water, all, um, definitely, the Legionella is, but it doesn't actually come from the water to start with. It comes from the soil. That's where it originates from. And they found that when they had the... Uh, the um, the volcano uh, problem in San Francisco, in Silicon Valley, and the CDC Atlanta collected a lot of the soil coming out of this uh, crack in the ground. They took it back to the laboratory and they tried to, God knows why, but they did. They, they actually cultured Legionella out of it. And they thought, oh, come on, don't get out of it. So they went back and got some more of this dust coming out of the, uh, the hole in the ground. And they did it again and again and again. And every time they grew it, 
they went into the garden and got a bucket of soil out of the garden and the laboratory, they grew it from there. Then all the technicians had to bring a bucket of soil in from wherever they lived and every bucket of soil grew it. If you go into your gardens and you get some soil, take it to the lab, 10 to 1 on, you'll get it. It's in the soil. But when it gets damp, i.e. the river beds, river banks, that sort of stuff, when it gets damp, for some unknown reason, I'd like to find out before I snuff it, um, I'd like to, uh, it, it becomes alive, it becomes virulent. And once it's damp, once it's moist, once it's wet, it'll be alive forever and a day until you kill it off. And that's the way it works. It's been doing it for trillions of years and it'll do it for more trillions of years to come. It ain't gonna operate, it, it, it ain't gonna alter. How does it multiply? It multiplies very, very quickly. We all know if we want to extend our family, what you do, two bottles of wine and, you know, and the rest is history, isn't it? Okay, uh, hopefully, dream on. <laughs> have you got the John and Janet book then, have you? Oh, I thought you had, yeah. And, <laughs> sorry about that. You, you got a little bit of laugh on you. And um, anyway, we know how we do it, um, but the bugs themselves, they don't do that at all, right? And what they do, they actually mutate or divide naturally. That's how they do it. And they do it very, very quickly. Not like us, nine months, or an elephant is 25 years, or whatever, whatever it is, I wouldn't know, but um, good on you, elephants. Um, but what the, these things multiply very, very quickly, very quickly indeed. And it's every 15 to 20 minutes. So you've got one bug, 15 minutes later, that divides naturally, yeah? You've got two. 15 minutes later, they divide, you've got that. 15 minutes later, you've got that. 15 minutes later, you've got, and so that, so on. So given the right conditions, the right temperatures, the right foods, the right nutrients, within a 24 hour period, you can have millions of them. And that's how quick they can grow. It's unbelievable. They, like us, like to eat. If we don't eat, we die, end of story, yeah? And they're the same. And some of the things that they like actually come in the plumbing world. Um, I, don't know if, uh, I don't know what you call it down here, I must admit, but up, up, up where I come from, our neck of the world, uh, we use a jointing compound called Boss White, uh, you know, for joints on pipe work. It absolutely loves it. It's like me in a T-bone steak, medium rare, with, you know, with onion rings. It absolutely loves it, okay? The other thing it likes is hemp. Hemp is another jointing compound, absolutely loves it. Rust is another one. Ferric, anything rust, absolutely goes for it, like there's no tomorrow. Calcium scale, like you get in the bottom of your, your kettle or in pipework, absolutely loves it. Oxygen it loves as well. Um, it also is like rubber, anything rubber I mentioned earlier on, or certain types of rubber. I'm not gonna go into that, it's a bit more, more than that, but you, you got the idea. <coughs> Um, and there's that. There's also, um, has anybody come across um, galvanized cold water storage tanks? Hands up, yeah, come on, let's show, show a bit of enthusiasm. Don't all fall asleep out there, right? Have you ever seen that white line around the water line? Yeah, well that white line is something called zinc sulfate and that's the zinc coming out of the galvanizing. Legionella and that white powder stuff, it goes mad on it, it loves it. It really goes to town, it really, really, it really loves it. Oil, it loves that as well. Um, has anybody got lathes, you know, for t turning metal, you know, metal turning lathes? If you've got that, the coolant. We've had people die from the coolant, which is spun off the, off the lathes as well. Um, has anybody got um, uh, uh, air compressors? I'm talking about air compressors like pumping your tires up, you know, in your car, that type of air compressor and the air receiver. And now and again, you have to open the valve at the bottom and let all the water go out. And it comes down in a big, in, in a big aerosol format and bobs your uncle. We've had people die from that. So it's unbelievable. It really, really is. So, how do you contract Legionnaire's disease? Well, the main way of contracting is by inhaling infected aerosol droplets, okay? So, it's like um, you go into the shower in the morning or whenever, um, you stand up there doing what you do under the shower, you know, keep it clean, and um, you're under there, no problem, no problem. Go out of there, go into the bedroom, dry yourself up, put your trousers on, go back in, clean your teeth, or, you know, uh, you know put your makeup on if you're going out the weekend or whatever, and um, that's the problem. 
it's the very, very, very fine aerosol droplets that are, that are hanging around in the shower tray. And it's those aerosol droplets that are the problem, those water droplets. The biggest the bug ever gets, the bacteria ever gets, is three, in general terms, is three microns in size. Three microns. Now that is three millionths, three millionths of a millimetre mark on your ruler. So you can see how minute these bugs is, are, but the devastation they can cause is absolutely unbelievable. It really is. Incubation period for Legionella is anything between two and ten days. The average is three to five days. The people who are most susceptible to it are male, in a ratio of three, one to, three to one to females. So the females have got the edge on us, boys. God, again. Um, never mind. Sorry, girls. Sorry, girls. Uh, so it's a ratio of three to one. And the most susceptible of that is if you're male and you drink, I'm, I'm talking about alcohol, you know, and I mean, a, you know, not the occasional pint down the pub at night, right? You know, I'm talking about sort of seven or eight pints of whatever you drink, you know, half a bottle of scotch and that sort of six, seven days a week and that type of idea. People like that. People who have cancer are very susceptible to it. Um, people who, um, bone marrow people are, are very susceptible to it. People who smoke, and now there's a, a survey I was looking at the other day, funnily enough, in another hotel room in another country, and these evaps, are, uh, f uh, you, know, you know, these evaporate fag things, you know what I want about? Yeah, big problems there, collapsed lungs and all sorts, pneumonia. So you've got to be careful. So, so there's quite a number of people, and people who have psoriasis, you know, people who have skin problems, yeah? And uh, you put all the cream on and all that sort of stuff. But what the medics do, they give you, they give you um, steroids to lower your body's immunity so your skin can heal itself, right? So when your body defenses are low, guess what? So there's quite a lot to it. And I know I've only got a few minutes left, Chairman, I would imagine. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot to it, I can assure you. I'm a member of the uh, Institute. Where is he, Mr. Kevin? Hi, Mr. Kevin. I, he's the boss, <laughs> sir. Um, so there we go. Uh, rule one, I've got two rules, okay? And I've been doing this since 1979, been all over the world, you name it, Russia, all over, all over the go. And I was, funny enough, I was in uh, Sweden, and anyway, that's another story, that's, oh, God almighty. 20, minus 23 in the daytime, how about that then, eh? That's very nice, yeah. Keep the water hot between 50 and 60, big rules. Below 20, cold. Keep the water clean. If you keep the water clean, we don't have any muck or rubbish in it because that's what the, the nutrients that the, the bugs are going to feed off. They absolutely love it. And keep it moving. The more stagnant the water is, the more dead leg pipe work you have, the more blind ends, some people call it, that is the worst problem. And the bugs will absolutely love it. You'll never get rid of them all. Never, never. You might get rid of them for a period, but then they'll come back. Uh, but if you do the four things above, you'll keep them at such a low level that our body's immunity can actually, you know, overcome it and, and, and kick it out. Rule two, for God's sake, designers, don't design problems in. We, the engineers, spend most of our time designing the problems out that you've designed in. So make, and also make the, make the design and, and, and whatever, make it nice and simple. That's what you want, simple. The simpler, the better. The more bells and whistles you have on the situation, the more problems there are going to be and more areas where the bugs can multiply. And my old phrase, which my medical boss always calls it, um, and I, I'm the guy who goes around and engineers the problem out. Um, this is where it all started. I'm not going to go into this because I, I can see a flashing red light here. I don't know what that means. I owe money, most probably. Um, that's where it all started in Philadelphia. I've been there to that hotel, the Bellevue Stratford Hotel, and it was the American Legion, like a bridge, you know, like a, you know, uh, a collection of the uh, uh, s s um, veterans, I should say, I don't think of the word then. And it was their 200th birthday. There was over 4,000 people, 4,000 4, people attended the convention. Out of that, there was 100, uh, um, 186 cases. And out of that lot, in the first instance, 29 people died. OK, but in fact, it was 20, uh, there was 39, sorry. The 29, they, they indicated straight away. But the other 20, uh, sorry, the other 10, sorry, um, they actually found out later on, much later on, that they have side effects from Legionnaires. You can go in hospital, you can contract Legionnaires disease, 
And what sometimes you can get over that by giving you erythromycin and all that sort of stuff. Um, but sometimes you have these side effects where your, body, your body's uh, uh, immunity has gone down and your organs have gone so far down that we, you can get over the Legionella, but you can have kidney failure, lung uh, um, uh, kidney failure, liver failure. Uh, you can be blinded by it. You can be paralyzed by it. You can go deaf, you can blind. It's unbelievable. And the side effects, ladies and gentlemen, are devastating, and I've seen a lot of it. And I must admit, I come away and it's a... You know, it really is. And some of them only young people, and that's the end of their life. Full stop, end of story. Sorry? Ra wrap up, right. I'm, I'm going to wrap up a bit rapid. <laughs> Super rapid, so watch out, boys and girls. I've told you where it comes from. I've told you how it goes. I've told you the food source. You can breathe it in. That's the main way. You can also uh, gag it in or aspiration. Um, if you're lying on your back, you can't drink and it gets into your lungs, the infected water. That's another way you can get it. Inhaling dust, um, soil dust from somewhere or other, get that in, gets in your lungs, gets damp, and you can get Legionella from that. And also, if you cut yourself and soil gets into your blood, that gets into your lungs and you can get Legionella that way as well. Um, a lot of gardeners get it that way at all. It gets into the lung. It's a lung disease. I'm going to just leave it at that. Um, the, um, the, uh, the, th uh, the main things is that you can get flu-like symptoms for the symptoms. Flu-like symptoms normally start it off. Then you get a, a non-productive cough. That's coughing all the mucus out of your lungs. And then after that, you get diarrhea and, uh, diarrhea and vomiting to get rid of the... the um, poison in your body and then obviously then uh, you get shortness of breath and then if you get that you're in hospital intensive care and um, you can die and I wouldn't wish, wish it on my worst en en enemy except well except one and he's in London now so sure <laughs> swine <laughs> he still breathes he's an oxygen thief uh, <laughs> Scouser. Pleurisy, you can get pleurisy after that, and I've had pleurisy twice, and it's, that's not very friendly at all. That's what the bacterium looked like. It's a rod-shaped uh, bacterium, gram-negative stain bacterium. That's what it looks like in, lung, in a lung tissue, that, that's uh, 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 rod-shaped. And that's what it looks like on a plate, on a BCY. It does not grow on a conventional blood plate. It actually grows on a, a Pacific plate, and that's the only way you'll actually get it to grow. There's a blood plate, no it won't. The middle plate, that's a negative one. And on the, on the right hand side, you can see the little white dots on it, and that is a positive plate to Legionella. There are 64 different strains of Legionella. Serial group one is the worst one. If you get serial group one, you've got 50 chances, 50, 50, 50 percent chance of surviving, okay? Uh, serial group three, five, and six are another one that have, have, have called pr problems. OK, in the, in the UK, we've got law and uh, people have gone to prison, are in prison now, um, to do with legionnaires because they messed it up. OK, and obviously can't go into that. And we're going to really go on now, Mr Chairman. This is a drinking water tank I found. Would you like to drink out of that, boys and girls? Maintenance, cowboys looking after the building. Yeah, get rid of the cowboys, bring the Indians in and get it done properly. OK, birds in, um, in, in a cold water storage tank in a school. Cryptosporidium um, is something where you get normally by sewerage uh, or things or dead animals, obviously. And these kids were ill, very, very ill. Contractor um, had made a mess up of all sorts of things. He went to prison. They don't mess around now, thank God. Stagnant water, you can actually see the, the scum on the top. And the reason for that scum on the top was somebody hadn't turned the ball valve on. Service valve. Simple as that. And a lot of these things with Legionella and other is so simple. Uh, this one is an old people's nursing home. You can see the black dots in there. They are spiders. Uh, these, uh, four of these women died in hospital. And that was the cause of it. It was a pigeon that had got, uh, um, a sparrow that had got in there. You can actually see the fungus around its head. And in that fungus was loads and loads of maggots. And that's what they were drinking. Maggoty water. How would you like to drink that? You know, a bit of meat into it. You know, it gives a bit of taste, doesn't it? You know. And that's the problem. This is not the tank, but you can see that white thing that's um, uh, um, 
it, it should have a piece of mesh in there to stop any, any uh, ingress of foreign matter in. The cowboy contractors didn't put the mesh in. The bird walked up there, and that's how that happened. Nebulizers, we've all seen these nebulizers. That's another thing. If they've been washed out, or they, sometimes they wash them out, and they leave, you can actually see there uh, the little white dots at the top, uh, top left hand, and that caused the problem with Legionella. This one is a joint and it hadn't been done properly and the water had got between the, where the, the, the pipe goes into the elbow and the water had got behind and that's where it was stagnant water and that was thousands of these in this building, absolutely thousands in this hotel. And we took them all apart, or they did, I didn't, but, and we sampled dozens and dozens of these. Legionella was in there. It hadn't been installed correctly. Cowboys again. Registered plumbers, for God's sake, let's get them. They've got to have them. End of story. Um, this is the dump valve off a shower. Um, I won't bore you with that, but it just made the inside of the shower pipe work. All the slime grew up in there, and that's the problem. So when somebody came on to turn the shower on, the slime came out of the pipe into the top of the shower head, and they contracted Legionnaire's disease. That's a new two-pipe shower. won't bother you with that at the present moment. Um, nozzles in the end of the taps are a waste of time, absolutely a waste of time. I know why they're there to make a nice spray so you can wash your hands, but they also slow the, water, the flow of water down. And by slowing the flow of water down, you get bioslime built up on the inside of the pipe where that's another area where Legionella, uh, it's a food source and a habitat. So don't do it. You can take the nozzles out, turn the taps on, and you can be surprised what comes out, I can assure you. Um, this is where... Um, point of use water heater you can see that white stuff and that was aluminium in there never have aluminium in water if you have aluminium in water and you drink that's aluminium sulfate and that can bring on uh, dementia and alzheimer's disease do not humidifiers will never get cleaned out that's another big problem which we get, will come against and this fluorescent tube uh, they've got like a, a spray bar across the top and they, the guys were um, inhaling the spray and that's where they got the legionella you've got the swan necks on the top of um, on engineering bits and pieces it's a dead leg if you've got them guess what you're going to do on a monthly flush it out like unused hand hand basins and all that you've got to flush them out church organs we had uh, legionella from there believe it or not um, St Paul's Cathedral in, in central London and um, anyway it was the humidifiers at the back I took them apart and you can actually see the muck and crud in there um, I put some smoke um, in there got the organist to come play a few words never put, use red smoke by the name never ever 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 use red smoke so I put some green in or some bloody colour I can't remember now anyway I got the organist to play some notes and the bigger um, the, the more bass notes he played which is a bigger diameter pipes you could see the smoke coming out over the choir stalls and that's where the choir the choir and the clergy contracted legionella and something else called Pontiac fever which is part of it um, this is a <laughs> mobile phone in a drinking water tank that's another one I found in there and these people I went in nothing to do with legionnaires these people landed up in a mental hospital for the rest of the life and it was the cadmium out of the battery that they were drinking in the water and that's how they contracted it that's the, the rust coming out of the bottom of chlorophyll that they said they'd cleaned out and they were lying. Uh, that is a living wall, and we had people die of Legionnaire's disease there. And, of course, what they do, they put water spray on those uh, living walls, and they were walking past, and that's how they got it. Uh, keeping water cold, uh, we've done this many, many times now. I know in Australia you get problems with hot, uh, hot, hot cold water for drinking and what I use is, is chilled plate, ex uh, plate, plate heat exchangers uh, we use um, chilled water with um, a small bowl pipe work and if you want me to um, in, uh, elaborate on that later on I'll go away in a corner and tell you about it but yeah right okay and this is the last one then the <laughs> This is the last one. This is the real masterpiece of plumbing. We had six people die of Legionnaire's disease to do with a hotel in, in Turkey. And um, the, uh, <laughs> I went out there, sorted that out, lot out. And I had to do a water risk assessment while I was there. Went in the gents' toilet in the staff side of the place. And uh, this is how they wash their hands, OK? Um, uh, you know, uh, created the hot water for washing their hands. So you can see the bit of sellotape holding the bottle up. The tap goes in there. Bit of sellotape on there holding on the tap. And the bit of black at the side where the cable is, that's a bit of blue tack holding the switch closed. And that's, so no way would they get um, Legionella from it, but they got hot water. 
Thank you very much. I'll clear off and thank you very much.